Why is there no crows in this city? What have you done with them? Where are all the crows? I want answers. What's up everyone, it's Scott here from WFLBC and uh, I'm coming to you from Nathan Phillips Square in Toronto. There's City Hall right over my shoulder. What I wanted to talk to you guys about was this camera right here. This is my trusty little Fujifilm X-A1 which was my very first Fujifilm X-Series camera. It was a gift from my family. I sort of tucked this thing away for the last couple of years because I purchased a, an X-T10. I also had an X-E1 at 1.2 and I traded that in for the X-T10. The X-T10 is a phenomenal camera. The X-T20 is a phenomenal camera. But this camera has got to be one of the most underrated cameras in the Fujifilm X-Series lineup. It doesn't have an X-Trans sensor. None of the A-Series cameras do, the X-A-Series cameras. This was the original 16 megapixel non-X-Trans sensor. People tend to look down on the X-Series cameras that don't have the X-Trans sensor. But I am one of the very few people who have shot extensively with both. I feel like there's a little bit of a controversial opinion about them that they're not very good. I actually think that they might be better. Now, it's a non-scientific opinion. It's, like I said in my X100F review, I am not a technical camera reviewer, I'm an emotional camera reviewer. I like cameras for the way they make me feel while I'm shooting with them. I like them for the results I get. Um, I don't go nuts over specs. And the thing about this camera is, that the files that come off of here, the JPEGs, are just as good, if not better, than my X-T10. Obviously the autofocus speed and things like that aren't going to be as good. It doesn't have a viewfinder, it's just a screen. You can put lenses on here with aperture rings, but it's only got a mode dial and then this dial and then this dial, which is also a button on the back. So there is less going on for sure. Give me a really weird look on the way by. I mean, I would too, to be honest. It doesn't have the same ergonomics as another X-Series camera, but it is still incredibly uh, easy to use once you get used to it. You can set this top dial and the rear dial uh, for shutter speed and aperture, or if you have a, uh, an XF lens with an aperture ring on it, you can set them for a shutter speed and ISO or whatever. You can set them for whatever to make it an incredibly easy to use camera. Um, if you're somebody that switches settings a lot. Here's the thing, this camera is super cheap and uh, in my last uh, X-Series camera review, which was the XF100, I'll link that below. That camera is an expensive camera. It's about a $1,700 Canadian dollar camera. I think it's about $1,300 US dollars. You can pick this camera up for under a thousand bucks with a couple of lenses. With three, with three lenses. So I did, I did the math. Uh, I'll also, I'll put that here. This is the XF 27 millimeter f 2.8 pancake lens. Fantastic lens, a great travel lens, a good all around lens. Generally, when you buy these things, they'll come with the original XC 16 to 50 or 18, 18 to 16 to 50, I think it is, uh, kit lens. It's not the best lens, but it's also not the worst. It's a great starter lens, and a lot of the photos that you're seeing sort of interspersed during this video were taken with that lens here in uh, Toronto. You can also pick up the XC zoom lens, the 50 to 230, which is the second longest zoom in the X series lineup. It's super cheap, comparatively speaking, to the rest of the X series zoom lenses, and uh, it's not very fast, the aperture is quite small, but it does have OIS, which doesn't really help you for sports, um, but the high ISO performance of this camera will help you for that. It's not really a sports camera, it doesn't have a viewfinder, you, you need that stability for sports. Um, for street photography, for 
landscape photography, for even wildlife photography, where your subjects aren't moving super, super fast, like sprinters or hockey players or soccer players or whatever, um, this is definitely good enough. Now, a couple of customizations I've made to this camera to make it more user-friendly. Obviously, I've got the uh, hipster rope neck strap. I've got this thumb grip that goes in the hot shoe. Um, let me uh, focus in on it here. Come on, you. There we go. So we got this thumb grip here, which uh, just slides in the hot shoe and cinches down. I've got this leather half case on here, which has access uh, to the battery and memory card slot through a little flappy door, and it doesn't obstruct the back, and you can still use the tilt screen, all that wonderful stuff. I feel like the results I got with this camera are as good as the X100F that I just tested. Now, I don't know if that's because of the camera or just because I'm a photographer, but I have a feeling it's the former more so than the latter. Um, I may be a photographer, but the differences between these two cameras is not that huge. So if you're somebody looking to get into photography and you want uh, a camera that will give you the results that you see other people getting with these cameras, but you don't want to spend a ton of money, um, you can find these used on eBay for really not a lot of money. Anybody that wants to get into the Fujifilm X-Series uh, and wants to get a few lenses in their kit and not blow the bank, go find yourself a used X. This guy's really pissed off at me all of a sudden. Whatever. Go pick yourself up a used uh, X-A1. Grab the pancake lens, grab, uh, grab the zoom, and you've got a really, really nice, compact travel kit. Pick up some extra batteries, because like all X-Series cameras, these things, they don't last a long time. But uh, yeah, that's it, you guys. Uh, side note, Toronto, you are a really cool city, and I don't know if uh, many Van Vancouver people know uh, much about Toronto, but they certainly do like to talk trash about Toronto. When you come here, I look to you. Oh my god, this seagull. People from Vancouver have this image of Toronto in their head, and uh, it's just completely wrong. Toronto's a beautiful city full of great people. Um, I don't know why they call Tim Hortons uh, coffee houses. It's on all the signs. It's not a coffee house, it's just the Tim Hortons. And Second Cup is everywhere, and you can't buy booze after 6 p.m. on a Sunday, like unless you go to a bar. That's it for me in Toronto. Uh, I shot a lot of film while I was here, like I mentioned in my CN Tower video. If you haven't watched that yet, I will link it down below. I'm gonna get that developed when I get back to Vancouver and I will post my results there. I've got a few films to review. Uh, Cinestill 800, Japan Camera Hunter 400. I spend more time editing the word um out of these videos than I spend shooting these videos. Thanks for watching, guys. Go pick yourself up a decent camera for not a lot of money and get out there and take some pictures, share them on the internet, become famous, and make millions of dollars. That's probably not gonna happen, but you never know. So, I don't know, what's stopping you? Hit subscribe if you wanna see more content from me. Hit that like button so I know that you like that content so I can continue making that type of content for you. I will see you back in Vancouver. Toronto, you're pretty great. See ya.